Boys and girls, it's Mrs. Samsel. Today we are going to talk about perspective. Perspective can mean two different things. Today we're gonna to talk to you about perspective from an artist's point of view, the way that they view the world. But perspective could also mean your point of view, your opinion of something. For example, Or in our artist's point of view or our artist's perspective, it's the way that they see things. So we see things that are far away getting smaller and things that are up close really big. And as an artist that's creating a work of art, we need to figure out how to draw that perspective, that vanishing point where everything starts to get smaller. So today I'd like to show you two different ways that we can do that. You can decide which work of art you wanna create or just share any ideas you have or creations you have on perspective. I can't wait to see what you create. Okay, so today we're gonna to begin with the example you saw that had an aquarium with a one-point perspective checkered pattern. To begin, you're gonna fold your paper in half and now we wanna fold it the other way to get the center point of our paper. Now that we have the center point of our paper, we are going to take our ruler and draw a diagonal line to the corner. We'll repeat the t to the top so it almost looks like an X. Now using my ruler, we're going to begin with the checkered floor that you saw, and I'm using the width of the ruler. Sometimes we use the ruler to measure, sometimes for width. Now taking the ruler from the center point straight down, and then diagonal in between about halfway, and same on the other side. And as you can see, this will become my checkered point and then this will become the aquarium. So the aquarium is a glass dome that we're walking through. And so we're gonna start by going straight up with our ruler, rainbow curve, straight down. And then I'm gonna give myself about two to three finger space and I'm gonna go straight up, rainbow curve, three finger space, straight down. And then I'm gonna connect that curve in, okay? And one more time on the other side, about three finger space, straight line. Curve is gonna be so big, it's coming off the paper, it's cropped and coming down to the side. Very important to keep these ones straight and these ones curved, and this will be the aquarium. Now, I'm gonna draw what's behind the glass. So I could have some fish, maybe some jellyfish, shark, octopus, turtles, any kind of ocean life that you would like to create. Notice with my school of fish, my group of fish, I have made them a little bit smaller as they get to the vanishing point and larger as they're away from it. 
objects are bigger the closer they are to you and smaller the farther away. Now that I've drawn all my characters, um, I could outline them in a black Sharpie if I had them. You can color them with crayon, and then you can use watercolor paint to paint the blue behind it. You could use markers, it's up to you. Now that I have everything outlined in Sharpie, I can go ahead and color with crayon. I'm using the crayon because the crayon has wax in it and I'm using the Sharpie because it's a permanent marker and when I go to use my watercolor paints the Sharpie permanent marker will not wash away and the wax from the crayon will still show up. Now that I have my artwork all colored with crayon and marker I can use my watercolors to paint the water. And I'm gonna show you one technique and that's using salt. Um, we use it a lot in the art room. They know I call myself the Tinkerbell Salt Fairy. And we're gonna get our paper really wet. And when your paper is really, really wet, you can sprinkle a little bit of salt. Now, it might not work at it's great at home because Miss Samsel usually uses fabulous watercolor paper that has the ability to absorb the water and absorb the salt. But you can play around with it and the salt will um, absorb the water and it'll leave behind really interesting little marks. And it'd be, um, I'm interested to see how it works on your paper. This is basic construction paper, so it's not fabulous um, like watercolor paper. The thicker paper you have, the better. So let's see. Okay, so I'm all done painting my artwork. Unfortunately, sprinkling the salt really did not absorb or leave anything. You can even see some of you know, the salt right here just wanting to come off. The paper um, that was the construction paper I used did not allow, and I used just the basic construction paper, did not allow the salt to absorb, but it still looks really great. Um, here I used some black marker, and you can see that that even got wet and leaked. Um, so hopefully you learn from my mistakes, or maybe you have some fabulous watercolor paper to do our salt technique. I can't wait to see what you create. Okay, so now, so now we're going to work on the second option for perspective, and this is the pop-up buildings. So what you'll do is you'll begin by folding your paper horizontal in half, opening it up, fold it the other way in half, so you have your fold. You're going to fold it back to your original fold in half. Here's my folded line. I have my three fingers and I'm going to make a dot and then I'm going to use my ruler to the point 
and corner of my paper and make a diagonal line. And I will use my scissors to cut that off. Now I can open it back up. This will be in my horizon line. And the horizon line is anything above that horizon line um, goes up kind of in the sky or in the air. Everything below it is kind of the ground. So we're gonna have buildings that are tall that are going up into the sky. This is the ground and the road below it. So we're gonna start with some buildings. So now that we have our buildings, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back on that horizontal fold on what I said was the horizon line. And we're gonna really make sure that that has a nice crease to it. We're gonna flip it over and crease it again and bring it back up. Now, grabbing at the middle point, what we want is for our buildings to come forward. So when you have your buildings coming forward, you can see you're gonna have a little bit of fold here and you're gonna want them to be flat on the ground and then the piece you have on the back, you're just gonna press down with your finger. So I know that sounds a little bit difficult. Let's do it again on the second time. So here's the middle of my paper. I'm bringing the buildings forward, getting them on the ground. And when I have them on the ground, I have a little piece of paper back here and I'm holding that crease. And now my buildings are standing up. Now that I have my buildings folded, I'm gonna open it back up and you'll see the crease that you just folded and you're gonna take your ruler and at that Point, that vanishing point, you're gonna draw the line. Okay, so if this is my road, I'm gonna make the little lines or the dash marks in the median. And I want them to get bigger as they get closer to me and then smaller in the distance. Now I can color my road and then I will tape my streets up. Okay, now I'm going to color the road in. I don't wanna just scribble back and forth. I wanna continue with the direction of the vanishing point to make it look like things are going back in the distance. Okay, so now that I have my road colored, I can go and color my buildings. Okay, 
Okay, now that I have my buildings colored and my road colored, I'm going to fold my buildings back down. And use some tape or glue right here or tape on the sides to hold it down. And there you have it. Your one point perspective buildings. You can put a little car in there and have fun with it. Can't wait to see what you post. Remember, be respectful, be responsible, and be kind.